In this video, you're going to learn everything you need to know about the spawn gizmo in Horizon Worlds and how to utilize it. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to Jackal Dude Gaming. Today, we're going to go over some of the one of the most important tools that Horizon Worlds gives us, and that's their gizmos. And more specifically today, we're going to talk about the spawn gizmo, arguably one of the most important because... Well, you need it to spawn places in your world, but you can do so much more with it, like uh, teleporting players, respawning players, and even adjusting players like gravity and speed. Um, but we're going to go over how to utilize the spawn tool, how to manipulate its properties in its properties panel, and we're going to go over a quick follow along scripting tutorial to utilize this gizmo. Now, if you don't really have a lot of scripting experience, don't worry. This is going to be a very, 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 very simple script. It's going to set a path to make like a kind of cool dodgeball game, which I might even expand on later. So be sure to check that out. And uh, yeah, let's get started. When you build a world, even a completely blank one like this, they're automatically still going to give you a spawn gizmo because you have to spawn somewhere. There has to be a location for players to spawn in. So you need to always have at least one spawn gizmo, which is why they give you one automatically. We are gonna go over the property panels of the spawn gizmo. Then in the second half of the video, we are going to use a simple script utilizing our spawn gizmo. It's gonna be a lot of fun and it's gonna be pretty simple. So uh, we'll probably play with this spawn gizmo, but if you wanna use another one or, cause you can use as many as you like, you're going to hit the menu button on your left controller, bring up your build menu, make sure you're in the gizmos tab. And then you just grab a spawn point and pop it on out and place them wherever you like. Now, there are a couple other reasons why I really like using the spawn gizmo. First of all, it is the size. It has this little avatar, this kind of fake dummy looking mannequin thing. This is relatively the size of most players when they enter your world. This box kind of represents how much space a player makes. So when you're building large structures or you're designing weapons or clothes or whatever, these are great references to how you should be sizing everything. So alone, just it being here, it's useful before we even touch any of its properties. But let's go ahead and put our cursor inside of it. And then we're going to press up on our thumbstick to access its properties panels. And let's go over this a bit. All right. Under this first tab under behavior, you see we have the start on spawn on it's on by uh, default, I believe. Now, when, if you are utilizing more than one spawn point, I would urge you to turn this off and only have it on, on the spawn point where you want your players to be when they enter your world, just so nothing gets confused. A good rule of thumb is to make sure Spawn on start is only turned on to one spawn point. That position only is basically saying it'll teleport whatever player to this, but it won't rotate them. So right now, if I were to spawn at this spawn point, I would be in this location and I would also be facing this direction. If you would rather have the player face whatever direction that they were facing anyways, you would switch this on. So the only thing that would change about the player is their position, but not the rotation. If this is the first spawn point of your world where your players will enter the world at, I would turn this off so you can actually have the spawn point facing to wherever you would like that player to be looking at. Now, player gravity and player speed are interesting options here. Basically, you can change these numbers to change the player's speed whenever they are spawned at this spawn point. For example, if, if you wanted them to go to a different stage where they had to race to the finish line before they can come back, you might want to increase their speed or reduce their gravity if you want them to jump higher over pits or whatever. But that being said, this is the default gravity and the default speed that most players in most worlds are set to by default. I would be a little wary on changing these too much unless you know what you're doing and you have a way scripted in to change them back. You can change player speed and player gravity through scripting as well, but this is also a neat way to change it. Just having them spawn in a different location with adjusted gravity and speed. 
Now under attributes, you'll have the position of it, the rotation of it, the scale and the tag. Honestly, the scale, you can't really do much with. Like if we pick this object, I can't make it bigger or smaller because we can't make players bigger or smaller in Horizons. Not yet anyways. I really wouldn't worry about this whole tag to begin with. Now, how do we utilize it? Like we know now that when we enter the world, we're gonna spawn on this, right? We go to, to preview mode. It's gonna take us to that spawn point. Let's delete this one so it's not confusing. <laughs> but how else can we utilize that? Well, we're gonna make a simple script that utilizes this spawn point here. It's gonna be pretty simple. So even if you're not very versed in scripting at all, I promise you, you'll be able to follow along. So let's get started. Now, before we get on to the tutorial, if this video has been informative, uh, informative, <laughs> if this video has been informative, please give this video a thumbs up as it really helps me out. Also, uh, think about subscribing so I can give you more of these gizmo tutorials in the future for Horizon Worlds. Okay, let's get on. Let's let's move on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to do that. I'm supposed to do that. I'm sorry. I had to do that. First, we're going to go back to our gizmos and we are going to grab a script gizmo. If you've never used one before, don't worry. I'll show you step by step exactly what we're going to do with it. But first, before we open that puppy up, we're going to go to shapes and we're going to grab a sphere. Why are we grabbing a sphere? Well, we are going to script a dodgeball. That's right. That game we've all played in gym class, whether you wanted to or not. Um, for building the dodgeball, it's going to be really simple. We're just using a sphere. We'll make this dodgeball-ish size maybe a little bit bigger. And we're going to open the properties panels of this object. And we're going to make this dodgeball-like. All right, collision layer. We want to collide with everything. We want it visible. We want it shadows, blah, 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 blah. We want it to be interactive. We want it to be grabbable, obviously. And we want it to have physics. So we're going to hit both here. Nice, it thunked on the floor. We want to turn gravity on. Uh, custom gravity. And uh, we don't need to put custom gravity on. We'll leave that off. Physics material. Now, this is going to be interesting. I want it to be a rubber ball. Boing, 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 boing. See, simply by giving it a different physical material, we've given it the texture of a dodgeball. Now, <laughs> we're pretty much almost done with this dodgeball. All we want to do now, which is pretty important, we want to go to the More tab. And Collision Events, we want it to collide with players. We want it to collide with players' heads or torsos. Grab Lock, who can grab anybody, who can take from Holder, only you. Cool. And we'll just name this Dodgeball, just to keep ourselves organized. Dodgeball. All right, we've made a dodgeball. Let's paint it. Why not? We are going to make it that dodgeball red. I know it's kind of like this gross orange, isn't it? And then we'll give it um, a dodgeball. Yeah, here we go. Here's like a dodgeball texture. There we go. You know. It's that texture that we all know is on a dodgeball. You get hit in the face with it and you have those that same texture on your face until next period. Is that just me? Okay, I get it. It's fine. Okay, now we have our dodgeball. Ideally, what we want to do is have the dodgeball follow, well, dodgeball rules. The idea is when, we, when a player gets hit by the dodgeball, when it collides with a player, we want to then take that player and respawn them at the spawn point, essentially making them out. So to do that, we're gonna have to utilize our script. You, uh, you're you gonna put your cursor in and press up on the thumbstick to open up a script panel. Now I know a lot of people are afraid of scripting, but you don't have to be afraid. This is going to be super simple. So we're just gonna call this the ball script. Perfect. And we'll delete that when world is started, we don't need it. So to start things off, we want to go to events and we want to find collision events because again, we want to, we want something to happen when the ball collides with a player. So we're going to find when colliding with player. Wow. Oh, and just take that, drag it and drop it right there. And it's got this little player tag that we'll utilize later. Now, 
Again, what do we want to happen when the ball hits a player? We want to respawn them at our spawn point. So there is a, another command for that, and that is under the motion tab. And if we scroll down a little bit, oh, they've organized this differently. It's nice. <laughs> um, player motion. Remember how I said before we can script different speed and gravity of the player? We can do that using this. But all we want is to respawn the player. So we're going to put that under the event when colliding with player. Sometimes this doesn't want to do what I say. Bloop. Awesome. So who do we want to respawn? We want to respawn the player. So all we're going to do is take the player tag under the when colliding with, and we're just going to take it and we're going to drop it in there. This is basically telling us that whichever player is collided with this ball, that is the player we are going to respawn. Where do we want to spawn it to? Well, we don't want to respawn it to self because this script is actually going to live and be attached to our dodgeball. We want to respawn the player to the spawn point. Now, under the respawn command, we have to put a spawn point here. If we put any other object here, it won't work. But how do we tell them that we want to spawn the player to the spawn point? Well, we're going to make a variable. So we're going to go all the way over here to the tab and under variables, and we're going to hit new variable. And we're just going to call this spawn. And it's going to be an object type. So make sure you change type down to object. Most things will be an object. And then we'll hit confirm. All right, so now we'll take our new spawn pill and we'll drop that instead of self. So when colliding with a player, respawn the player to spawn easy now let's attach that and that's it we've done we're done scripting we just need to attach everything accordingly so uh this is made and it's going to exist here now we're going to go back to the properties panel of the dodgeball so let's go back down here we still have this properties panel open and here at the bottom where it says attach script we're going to hit this drop down menu and this drop down menu will have listed every script that we've made for this world so we're going to hit the ball script. Now, under here, it says spawn empty. Basically, we made a variable called spawn, but the script doesn't know what we mean by that. Whenever we make a variable in a script that refers to an object outside of the object we are attaching the script to, we need to reference it. So referencing it is super easy we already have the spawn point properties panel open. So we're gonna take the spawn point pill right here above the attached script, and we're gonna drag that all the way over to where the empty box is and drop it there. <laughs> now you can see we have attached a blue line from the properties panel of our spawn point to the script that is attached to our dodgeball. So now our script should know when we talk about spawn, we mean this specific spawn point. Okay, now let's go see if it works. So we're gonna press up to go into preview mode. And there, there is our ball. We can grab it, bounce it because we gave it the rubber properties. And now, so while, yeah. <laughs> if we hit ourselves in the face with it, we get respawned. <laughs> so if we throw it up, and then get bonked by it. <laughs> oh no, my ball. We respawned at the spawn point. Now you can see how we can easily make a dodgeball game about around this. I mean, I would put up walls everywhere so we don't accidentally throw our ball off the edge. But now we have a working dodgeball that'll collide with people and out them, essentially. I wonder if I can catch this without it colliding me. Yeah, so now you, we can play a game of dodgeball where you can play by the traditional dodgeball rules. If you get hit by the ball, you're out. But if you catch the ball, you're not out. You can probably do some more advanced scripting to make the player who threw the ball out if we were to catch it. There you have it, guys. There's a simple dodgeball script you can use to utilize your spawn points. There you have it. Now you can blast your friends in the face with dodgeballs. It'll be a whole lot of fun. But if you want to know how to build more of a structure or atmosphere be sure to check out my video on how to build in horizon worlds thanks for watching i'll see you next time